Hey class, this is Julie Quinn here. I was thinking about your assignment for the um, hybrid exercise, and I wanted to demonstrate an example of how, uh, I, how I think about setting this paper up and how you can kind of get started. This is a raw example, and remember, I'm a professor. I know I approach this a little bit differently, so if your example is a lot shorter than mine, that's okay. But I wanted you to think about the information that you tend to bunch around data and what that could look like. And so here's an example, and I will go over it more in class because there are a couple of other things that I've tinkered with in here that I think could be really helpful for you. So if you take a look at the screen, let me actually just bump up my Zoom here. Okay, here's my example. Um, and I've given you, um, just to let you know what I'm actually was looking for was in the purple, but you could kind of see where the warrants fit into a, a general essay organization. Okay, so in my example, I am writing about arming of teachers. This is an, ex an example that I did a bit in English 111, but I've been talking about the death penalty so much that I figured arming teachers would probably be a good example. Let's mix it up a little bit. My main claim, so Tolman Triad Part 1. Most teachers, so I have a qualifier in U U.S. K through 12 schools, so I didn't say all schools, but I let's limit the what we're talking about, should not be armed. And I just highlighted that to say that you could tell it's a thesis or claim because there's an opinion. Should is a is a or should not great keywords. Because and I have three reasons. The fear an armed classroom creates for students, the risks associated with accidental discharges, and the exorbitant, the really high costs of training. Okay, so I have a very traditional thesis, re, uh, argument, and three reasons. Remember, you don't always have to have three reasons, but let's take a look at what I wanted you to have. Maybe a claim, a piece of data, and a sentence of warrant so you can start to see what the structure of this could look like. So my first one, X claim. The first reason, and so it's just re restating the thesis a little bit, but only going to this part right here. Okay, so I'm using it as a topic sentence. Play, you can play around the phrasing a little bit, but you're reminding students, this is my first reason, is that it, it, of the stress it causes students, especially students of color being policed by armed teachers. There's just a lot of layering of um, anxiety uh, in that position, especially with um, policing in America right now. So I found, I did some academic research and I found this quote uh, from Minshew, okay? Quote, much of the debate surrounding the bill, and this is Florida's guardian program. I added that because the quote, if we take it out of context, none of the readers would know what the bill is we're talking about. So I used brackets to add that. Is that our main teachers jeopardize the safety of the entire school community. And Minshew was quoting Jones and Sung. Okay, that's part of the quote. So I had to leave that in there because that's not Minshew's research. That's research my author that I'm borrowing is borrowing from Jones and Sung. So you can leave that data in there. That's fine. The in-text citation belongs inside the quote. Many of whom have spoken out uh, against Florida's Guardian program have done so in concern specifically for black and brown students' safety. Extensive research has been conducted about teachers' use of implicit bias in the classroom, wherein their unconscious attitudes negatively impact their interactions with students of color. These implicit biases manifest themselves in students of color being disproportionately identified as behavior problems because of this. Studies have found that students of color are suspended at an alarmingly higher rate than their white peers. These facts are concerning on their own, but, oh, and I, I may have mistyped, now we're adding a little gun into the equation. That's just the quote, and you know, I may not use all of this, but this is what I've borrowed so far. This doesn't look like a traditional paragraph. I'm just sort of organizing a claim, some data, and then how do I connect this to me saying, all right, no guns in the classroom. This is how I came up with a warrant for that first piece of data. And remember, we did practice this in class um, recently. Teachers already operate, often subconsciously, on their own, and I, I probably need a comment there, on their own internalized biases against students of color. When police often, you know, notice I'm using a lot of qualifiers, um, uh, but let's say sometimes I can mix up the words, act on this. And black and brown Americans like Philando Castillo and George Florida killed in the line of duty. Imagine a teacher with the same biases, but even less training, discharging a weapon against what he or she might consider an unruly student. 
Students already recognize the disproportionate and often racial undertones in teachers' classroom punishments. Adding weapons to that arena is foolhardy at best and will lead to an eventual deadly error in judgment. So this is my explanation or my under, oops, I messed up there. This is my explanation, my understanding, and I did it in like three or three sentences. I'd asked you just to do one, but what I want to show you is how a teacher perceives this assignment, you know, um, and it's a bigger quote than maybe I would use, but it's a piece of data that's related to my overall argument, no guns in the classroom. And then I used a smaller claim as maybe a topic sentence. And then I got a piece of data and then I have a discussion. This would make an interesting paragraph for sure. Now, here's my second reason. What did I say my second reason was? The risks associated with accidental discharge. Okay, so the second reason, and that really should not be bold. I'll fix that a little bit later. Hang on, let me just fix that because that was bugging me. The second reason that most teachers in US K-12 schools should not be armed ever is because, you don't notice that when I was first doing this, I didn't notice my typos, but now that I'm even going through my notes, I'm finding my typos, is because of the risk associated with accidental discharges of weapons. Data, I found this in a Washington Post article. A teacher who is also a reserve police officer, trained in firearm use, accidentally discharged a gun two states at Seaside High School in Monterey County, California, during a class devoted to public safety. School of, oh my God, the irony. School officials said in a statement, a male student was reported to have sustained non-life-threatening uh, injuries, and that was from Barbash. So even though this isn't the draft of a paper yet, what I've got going on here is when I borrow a quote, I automatically put the, the quotes around it so I don't risk plagiarism. I automatically add my author's name right after it, and then I even created a work cited. There's Barbash and Minshew, and we'll get to Rajan and Brainus in just a moment. But I build my work cited as I go. Anytime I find information, I plug it in so I don't have to wait to the very end. That's just part of my process. Okay, so my warrant about the discharged weapon anecdotal example was, even those who are trained often make significant mistakes in the handling of weapons, as evidenced in the Washington Post article by Barbash. Also, consider the stance. So here's a little bit of, of additional information. Um, of a teacher takes in pre-COVID classrooms, they don't always face their students. Maybe they're writing on a board. They don't, they're not acting like trained police because they are not trained police. The shift in position and visuals in a classroom, in addition to seeing students as potential perpetrators, and that actually goes back to point X. And so in your warrant, you can add more thoughtful discussion that relies on even earlier data if you want will make accents like the Seaside High School weapon discharge all the more common. And I just had another sentence, and this is a key reason, or another, I guess, part of this. Okay. Okay, so for my third reason, that we've got here was related to, if we scroll up to the top of this document, you can see that it said the exorbitant costs, okay? The final reason teachers in K-12 classrooms in America should ever be armed is because of the significant federal costs, which the United States right now just cannot afford. You'll notice I'm not, I'm trying not to copy the thesis word for word. I'm trying to change it around a little bit in my body paragraphs because explaining ideas in a new way, it helps those ideas sink in. So this is my third reason. I'm like, federally, we just can't afford it. Here's a quote that I found from a financial, oh, I keep doing that, sorry. From a financial perspective, a 2013 report assessed the cost of placing an armed school resource officer in every elementary and secondary school across the United States. The report accounted for an estimated variations in salary, student population size, and number of hours of work per academic year. Drawing on these estimates, the cost would range from 19 to $22 billion annually, which accounts for nearly 30% of the current federal education budget. The United States currently has an estimated 3.1 million full-time teachers. Arming even 20% of them would result in similarly significant increases in the federal budget. budget. We're talking about just one school re resource officer versus however many teachers are being armed, and that's Rajan and Brannis. And you'll notice that I added an emphasis added. So what I did was when I when I pulled when I borrowed this quote. I italicized part of it to highlight it for my readers. You can do that. That's not considered meddling with it as long as you are explicit in saying, I added some emphasis here. And here's my warrant. Here's my talking through it. Because they're, 
there are, oh, my grammar, did you see I caught me in a grammar? Because there are already arguments about the federal education budget being too large. The pressure of adding an additional 30% of cost to fully train and weaponize some teachers, not even all, but just some teachers, to be ready for potential shooting incidents is just too great. This money could be much better utilized in other protective measures outside of schools, like armed security or metal detectors and cameras. And like, we'll just say, um, I, and, and armed security was part of that, we'll just say, like, in, implementing. Sometimes you have to read through it a couple of times to figure out what you want, like implementing metal detectors and cameras. In addition, money would be best spent, there's another grammar error, on shrinking class size and on new technologies and equipment for outdated buildings, in essence. Spending money on arming teachers who don't want to become even more police-like in their classrooms, most of whom qualify, who don't want to become even more police-like in their classrooms is the wrong move, even from a strictly financial perspective. So you can see here that I've taken the time to find interesting data, different pieces of data related to my claim. Um, I started with what's called a working thesis. These are the, the feelings that I had, and the research supports this. I've got one piece of data, but doesn't mean that these paragraphs are over. So if we were to take this and make this a body paragraph, Watch what we can do. It doesn't mean the paragraph is perfect or done, but we've got the shape of something now, right? And then we just strip that out. And that right here, let me just insert a page break, was a fairly detailed body ah. paragraph. You can do the same and you can grow this. This doesn't mean that this is my final body paragraph. I can then have another paragraph on teachers being armed and maybe move from data to um, or grounds and data to backing. My argument was that students recognize the racial undertones. What if I have backing now in a new paragraph? You know, students being interviewed. And I provide a little bit of extra data that reinforces the main point and my warrant. That's how we get to the second triad of backing. But I wanted to just share this with you. And you can see that I that, that I even have, um, I'm actually going to just bold this, this to, to sort of make this pop. That I even have qualifiers um, in here. I don't have uh, the one piece of the Tolman puzzle that I haven't mentioned in this file is the rebuttal some of the ways that maybe students are safer in classrooms with guns or what have you or teachers that may want it i can do that in its own section but you can see how if based on the assignments exercise if you take a the idea of like a claim as a topic sentence and a piece of data that you're used to borrowing or your grounds that you're used to borrowing you want to take the time now to draw out the discussion even more in essay one you may have had this quote you may have had like one sentence. Now I'm looking for a little bit more discussion. I hope this video has helped you. I'm going to include um, this uh, uh, file um, in my comment in the 112 discussion, and we'll get to talk about this more in class next week. Reach out if you have any questions.